Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time we're going to be cutting up this pecan log here on my backyard built giant bandsaw mill thingy. <laughs> this pecan log came all the way from Gulfport, Mississippi. My buddy Phil and his son Harry brought this log to me back in November. They came up and spent a day with me. They brought a few logs. It was kind of a miserable day, so we only got through one of their logs, but they left this pecan as well as a live oak crotch for me to saw in the future. If you haven't seen the video where Phil and Harry came up for a cold November Minnesota day, I will leave you a link to that. It was a pretty miserable day. <laughs> so let's take a quick walk around here and see what, uh, what we're dealing with here. So we got like a half a limb here. There's one limb coming up here. Got another limb coming off this side. And then the biggest one is over here. So I've oriented the log, so I'm gonna have some crotch figure here in the middle. This is the biggest limb, so it should produce the most amount of that kind of figure. We'll have a little bullseye thing going on down here for a bit until we get through this limb. And then we should have a little bit of crotch figure coming in from here as well. So hopefully a good amount of figure here and then here, two crotch feathers, and then maybe some kind of figure around this giant knot bullseye kind of thing is gonna be down here. You can see some of the, uh, the figure in here. This is rippled. So we got a little bit of curl compression figure down here. So we've got that going for us. The other thing about this log is it's pecan and it's uh, stupid dense by comparison to what things I cut up here in uh, the northern United States. <laughs> so I don't have it uh, all the way up against the stops right now. It's just so heavy. It's like not even worth it to try and scoot it over. So it's uh, kind of floating out here in the air. So I have it uh, held between two of the clamps. So I've got uh, one here holding it like that. And then there's another one on the other side under that limb there. And that's helping to stabilize it so it doesn't rock around a whole lot. Another thing on the setup here is I've got this end raised up just a little bit, about two inches to uh, kind of level things out. That end is a lot bigger than that end. So that should kind of level things out and keep us from having some kind of goofy tapered board kind of thing. So for some dimensions, we are at about, you know, 29, 30 inches down here, depending on where you come across. This thing is just a little over eight feet. We're covering four bunks, two feet each, that's eight feet long. And then this end down here is about 26. So, should be some, uh, some nice wood in this thing. The other thing you can probably see is we've got some mushrooms growing here and down here. So we might have a little bit of spalting inside the log this has been sitting on the ground here for what like nine months now i'm not sure how long this was sitting before uh phil and harry brought it up here uh, and the red paint is just overspray from using this as a spray table <laughs> so that's about it for the notable things on the log i'm gonna get the saw set up to make the first cut and we'll see what's inside of this thing All right, so the biggest downside of this stuff is its, uh, its weight. It's really, really heavy. Oh boy. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Come on, gravity. You got this, gravity. Boom. Ooh. Yeah, we do got a little bit of spalting. That's cool. This limb is gonna provide some really cool figure. Ooh, that's nice. So there's a ton of cool things happening around this limb. Oh, look at all this figure right through here. We got a lot of, it's the bark inclusion around here too. Yeah, that's nice. See what's going on down here. Your standard pecan sapwood type of situation here. Clear. <laughs> yeah, this is cool, whatever that is. That might have been a bark inclusion or something at some point. Yeah, that's nice. Beautiful stuff. So this thing was rocking around a little bit, but 
shove some crap <laughs> underneath it, and this seems to be a little more stable. So at this point, it should be good to just uh, keep on sawing until we run out of throat depth. Okay, let's take a look at this first one. This is the uh, the underside of the one we looked at already. Ooh, man, I love the reds in here. There's some really interesting figure out here in the sapwood. That's really cool, but man, all of these deeper reds, this looks more like a bark inclusion, but just the color and the stuff is amazing. Woohoo! Oh yeah. I do 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 So we are starting to get a little bit of staining from that spalting. So we got a little spalting down in here, but you can see the blues from it sitting for a while. It's really apparent as they come up here to this limb. We're starting to get into some crotch figure here, but we got some spalting, which is really nice through there. And the same kind of deal over there with that limb, bit of spalting, but overall a nice, almost purple color to this one. Two, three, ba! <laughs> Splish, splash. Ho, 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 ho. These could get, keep getting better and better. Now we're starting to get into some of that limb, so we got some of that crotch figure coming through. Ho, 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 ho. So there is that little bit of crotch figure starting to come through. Got a bit of a bark inclusion here. And yeah, look at that. It's nice, very nice. I'm liking this detail over here too, with a little bit of spalt coming in here and this coloration. That is super nice. A lot of fun little details on here. But man, I'm loving the color of pecan. 
It's quite nice, quite beautiful stuff. Next, oh yeah. Flip. All right, let's see what this guy's got going on. Ooh, ooh -hoo -hoo. Oh, I'm liking this. Hey, you guys got some beautiful wood down south. So down here, we're through that limb and now we just have some nice straight green stuff, really clear. Then we get up into my favorite part here, that little crotch area with the bark inclusion. You see the feather starts all the way down here. All the way up. Beautiful stuff. This is, I love this detail here though. And this thing, whatever that is, we are getting into this little hole that was there, but it's actually not that deep. It's not as deep as I thought it was gonna be and doesn't really seem to have much effect on the wood behind it here. So we do have a little bit of kind of staining and spalting as a result of that, but nothing structural, which is really nice. All right, this is starting to get interesting now because we're getting towards the, the pith area of the tree. So we have the uh, big old structural cracks through the middle, which you, you kind of expect. That's beautiful though. So this one's gonna have a mostly quarter sawn orientation. So all through this side here, this is all gonna be quarter sawn. You can tell it's really nice and straight grained. And you're going to have the same thing on this side. And you got the nice crack type thing up the middle. We are almost through all the crotch figure on this limb though. So we're starting to lose a lot of bark inclusion and the crotch feather, but it's still going to be very pronounced. And that is a, that's some cool wood. I love these little details. They're almost like bark inclusions. They're just really nice. That's how you flip a slab alone. Who put this bucket here? Some nice stuff in this one. Not a whole lot of weird stuff. Some nice wood as a whole. Well, taking a quick look at uh, cut quality, looks like it's pretty good and flat. Not a whole lot of uh, saw marks either, which, uh, you know, this stuff's pretty hard, so pretty interesting. There's maybe a really slight dip there. Not too bad. So, this one's got a couple of really cool knots in it. We got one down here, the sun's kind of messing with things here. We got one knot down here, so something like that. It's pretty beautiful. And then on this end, we got another knot with some more cool stuff happening around it. I love all this color and figuring around it. But uh, yeah, it's wood. I like it. All right, last slab. This stuff's actually pretty clear, at least on this side of the log. What we do have is cool and a knot and uh, patterning going on around down here, but very, very clear. So that leaves us with this chunk here, which is maybe three or four inches thick, but does taper into the middle. So I could pull another slab or maybe a slab and a little bit out of here. But I think what I'll do for the sake of variety is get the 
two offcuts set up and cut them into boards is, uh, you know, something different. <laughs> So these boards have a pretty good amount of spalting and other kind of interesting things going on, especially towards the ends here. You see we got some really fun greens and stuff and there's some spalting around this knot here. Not a whole lot of material left in that first kind of off cut, but we did get this kind of chunk down here, this thing. So, you know, most of this area is pretty good. So that's a kind of a low grade junky board, but it's got something good in there for some small projects. Then the other board, the widest one, is, uh, is quite nice. I mean, it looks exactly like all the slabs, but <laughs> it's kind of what you expect. Here's an idea of what all that spalting down here is like. So this will end up being something pretty cool someday. This pecan is absolutely beautiful. I love the colors and the stuff. I love those pink and red hues. It just makes for really, really interesting looking wood. And I am really looking forward to getting this stuff dried and getting it into the shop and making some projects out of it. So I stacked that live oak log on top of here. If you haven't seen that already, I will leave you a link to that. Another beautiful wood, another tree does not grow around here. So again, a big thank you to Phil and his son Harry for taking that road trip and bringing these logs up here so I can saw them up and check them out for myself. It's really cool to be able to see uh, this, the absolute variety of woods and trees even just within one country. So even though these trees grew about 1,200 miles from here, they're still, I guess, native <laughs> domestic trees. But where I'm at up here in Minnesota, this is basically like a domestic exotic, so to speak. So they brought these up here almost a year ago to the day, and they're finally cut up and finally drying and cannot wait to uh, get them in the shop and get some stuff made out of these trees that I don't normally get to see. So thank you, Phil. Thank you, Harry, for the amazing logs. Hope to see you guys again soon. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this one. Thank you, as always, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.